Это вот.
honored to have you worshiping with us. Here are a few events that are happening at our church and throughout the community. The missionaries are accepting our perishable items for the Thanksgiving baskets. Please bring your items to church and see Sister Johnny Clayton for further details. The Christmas play rehearsal will be immediately following church. In-person church conference will be Tuesday, November the 7th at 6 p.m. Quarterly conference will be via Zoom Tuesday, November 14th at 7 p.m. Please use our church ID for Zoom. Please invite someone to celebrate with us on Family and Friends Day, November 19th at 11 a.m. Reverend Johnny Ray Sampson and the Limestone Baptist Church will be here to share with us. There are several events that are occurring throughout the week, and we would love for you to join us. Our young adult ministry call with crew hosts a weekly prayer call every Monday night at 7 p.m. via Zoom. If you would like to be a part of the call, we would love to have you join us. We are being blessed on our weekly Wednesday night Bible study. Please join us for Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Join us for Sunday school on the first and third Sunday, starting at 9.45 a.m. in person, and on second and fourth Sunday at 9 a.m. via Zoom. At the park, we have worship service every third, first and third Sunday at 11 a.m. We would love for you to join us. This has been your news at the park, and if you would like to add any announcements, please call and text Megan the Thursday before Sunday service. Welcome again to the park, the house of refuge for God's people. Amen, amen. amen. What are birthdays for today? You got any? What are we, November already birthdays? Oh, yes. Woo, goodness, what are our November birthdays? We're so glad to see you all here with us, each and every one of you. Want to shout out to Sister Jacquisha. Am I saying that right? Yeah, we're glad to see you in here. The she, pastor has already checked within her since she joined church. And let her know we love her and we so glad to be here. We're glad to see all of you all here with us today. We start a new season and a new time, aren't we? I tell you, it was good to get an extra hour of sleep. I felt good for those of y'all who go to a job every day. But I mean, I'm still on the job. I'm still on the job. November the 6th is Reliqua. I would like to call him Shay. Shay's birthday. Shay's birthday. Because I'm giving wrong saying that, right? <laughs> November 15th is Derek Watkins. Hold on. Oh, your points get short, short in November, don't they? <laughs> November 22nd, Cassandra Pinkston. November 24th, Jacqueline Roberts. November 28th, Jayla Taylor. And November 29th, Vivian Ashley. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday. Needed a basket, and we don't want to have that. 
If you have someone that you want to give a message to, please let us know. We don't know who is in need. Don't be ashamed. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 I know y'all know some folks that even if you know some elderly folk in your neighborhood right. who might not have family members to come during that season and sit with them or bring something to them, we want to be a blessing to them. Uh, we also are going to, um, after after uh, preparing for our uh, family and friends, our chairpersons, uh, Mel and Jaquita and Sister Rodney are doing a dynamic job in their planning. They got a wonderful program outlined for us. And we want to go over that immediately followed Bible study on Wednesday night. I'm going to ask that our chairman of the steward board, Sister Marilyn, is present just in case those checks got to be read. And I want to make sure that Megan is there so we can have those screens together. And Shay, if you need to be present, Make sure that you are there, and um, since you're our exhorter, you may have to pop in at any moment. If anything don't go right during the program, you got to know that you got to step in. Plus, doing that Sunday, we're going to also have, uh, well, it won't be this Sunday, so we don't have to worry about our rent, but we know we want you to stay on Zoom as well, okay? All right, we want to make sure that we got all that taken care. November 2 to the 14th, our presiding elder will be with us for his quarterly conferences, it's his conference, and he's gonna do it via Zoom. So everybody can be present. He's gonna join us via Zoom on Tuesday, November the 14th. But here at the church, we'll be here. I need as many people who can come out and join us for a church conference. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get ready for planning the next upcoming year. Join us for church conference at 6 p.m. here in person on Tuesday. I would like to meet with the stewards at 5 o'clock. If you cannot meet with me, stewards, at 5 o'clock, please reach out to me prior to 6 p.m. All stewards reach out to me prior to 6 p.m. But we'll be here in the building at 6 p.m. for church conference in person. Thank you all for all that you do. Thank you all as we come to the close of the year. We're getting excited about it. We're getting excited about what God is doing for us. And uh, just grateful. Just grateful. I got a spirit of gratefulness this morning. Spirit of gratefulness. Amen. Spirit of gratitude. Stuart, if you come at this time.
Christmas play. That's adults and children if you want to participate. Pastor will be back. I'm going to run down and take communion to Sister Fanny and Brother Charles and, um, and Brother Clayton. Get, um, Clayton. And then I'll um, be back to the church. Let us stand for the offer to the response. All things come up here, Lord. Come
But she told me, she said, Mom, this weekend I'm going to make me a prayer board. I'd never seen a prayer board. I thought she was talking about a vision board. I think y'all did something similar to that. And she said, well, she sent me a picture of what her prayer board is going to look like. And she said, Mom, it's going to have a bunch of prayers on there, things that I need God to do for my life. We spoke last night and she told me, she said, Mama, I'm going to church in the morning.
you know that your children are serving your God. Thank you. They don't know him for himself. But mama said he's a good God. Daddy said he'll be faithful to you. So we're going to serve him. But every now and then, he shows up in their life. And he reminds them that he's no longer mama God and daddy God. That he belongs to them. And he loves them and he sees them. And he's making a way out of the old way. Our scripture for the morning is Galatians 6. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 9. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. And whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. I want to preach a message today entitled Thanks Living. Thanks Living. Oh, I know some of y'all saying, Pastor, it's Thanksgiving. No, it's Thanks Living. You know, I was reading an article in Ministry Matters, which is a United Methodist church leadership resource. It's a guy, the leaders of the church, and the article referred to Thanksgiving as the middle child holiday. It says that Thanksgiving is overshadowed by Halloween and Christmas. Now y'all, y'all know any of y'all are shoppers. Now, and you know your pastor likes to shop. I shop anywhere from the family dollar, do you hear me? Amen. To Linux, to Phelps, it don't matter, it don't matter. I started, I go to family dollar, and I don't know how, I mean, I'm a Dollar General fan. Amen. I go to Dollar General, I don't care how many different times during the week. But I was in Marshalls the other day and decided to go to the home good section of the store. And Christmas was everywhere. The store was thinking it was Christmas. And if you really a shopper, then you know even before Halloween, some stores had what? Christmas trees all around. Christmas trees were everywhere. This is what I this, this, this society has forgotten about what? Thanksgiving. Society has robbed Thanksgiving of a significance. It's unfortunate that Thanksgiving has been suppressed so soon after the pandemic. Just a couple of years ago, if y'all remember, we were praying to gather together with our friends. We were afraid to get with our family, weren't we? Amen. Just a couple of years ago, we were praying to God to please let our family be able to come together in one space. And some of us were burying our family members because of the virus, doing the holidays. How soon has this world forgotten? Thanksgiving got to do what now? It got to get anywhere it fit in, don't it? And y'all don't know Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I love for all of y'all nothing. I will eat that Thanksgiving meal for four or five days. I be the only person that I have still trying to eat things. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, it, I'm trying to transform the meal well. So I love it because I love the turkey, the ham, the greens, the potato salad, all kind of candy yams, pies. I love it all. I want all of it. I want all of it. I'm in there trying to still eat it. And I'm the only one in the family trying to eat Thanksgiving food because I love the holiday. Most important though, I love for all of my family to be in one space. I love it. I love cutting up. I love watching movies. I love taking naps together. I love all of it. You know, most of them, they gonna wanna get some pizza or some seafood right quickly after they get, but I'm still on the one saying, y'all need all that for me to come here and eat some for you. Thanksgiving food. I love it. I get so excited for it. That's why I didn't want nobody to eat it on the job. I didn't want them to invite me to no Thanksgiving. I tell them real quick, let's have chicken wings or something like that because I don't want y'all to mess up my taste buds. But when I think about the goodness of God, yeah. I can't help but say yeah. I can't help but say yeah. I can't help but serve him. Yeah. Do you understand that Thanksgiving last year, I served it at University Hospital. Yeah. I cooked the meal, made a plate, and went to the hospital to see my mother in the hospital. God's been good to me. Yeah. He's been so good to me. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's been so good to me because mama's still here. 
is my worship, y'all. This is my worship. Because last year at Thanksgiving, I went to see mom and I couldn't even tell her that they didn't know if she was going to make it or not. But I kept coming in that hospital. And this year, to be able to be in November and to see her name with a clean bill of health. Mama was diabetic last year. This year, she no longer diabetic.
how I love this principle of sowing and reaping. I tell you, to me, it's a prosperity principle. A lot of people think that your job is going to make you rich. A lot of people think that your business is going to make you rich. A lot of people think that lottery is going to make you rich. You think your investment is going to make you rich. All of that is good, but all of that is man-made and it's going to pass away. Amen. But what has changed my life financially, what has made my life different financially, is two things. Tithing and this principle of sowing and reaping. Amen. Sowing and reaping. My husband will tell you that when the Holy Spirit says to bless, I don't mind blessing somebody who got a high price. That'll make you give cause to folks. Amen. Brother Fitler didn't understand that a long time ago, but then they said, I know he called me, he said, we're going to give our Lexus to my 16-year-old niece. He said, she's the only niece that I have that don't have a car. And he said, when she turns 16, she's getting it. SUV. I said this gentleman has learned the principle of sowing and reaping. And not only has he learned the principle of sowing and reaping, but he done got better than the pastor. <laughs> and all I can say was, I received it. Because he was believing God. He was believing God that God, that he had a niece to take care of. She was the only niece that didn't have her own car and was getting ready to be of age. And her parents had five children. And he knew that those five children, with five children, you can't buy a 16-year-old a car. Mm -hmm. And at that time that we gave the car away, they left us with one car. But God saw his heart. Amen. He saw his heart. He saw his heart. See, you some people, you don't understand the sacrifices that folk make to be a blessing to other people. But he understood it. That he understood that this principle of sowing and reaping is powerful. It, 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 sometimes it don't make sense to us, but what makes sense to you is that when a farmer plants what? Collard greens. Help me, Brother Clayton. When a farmer plants collard greens, he doesn't expect to get corn, does he? No. When the harvest comes, the farmer goes to the garden to pick what? Corn? No! He goes to the garden to pick what? Corn. Oh, yeah. So it is that Paul warns us against sowing, y'all, to please the flesh. Amen. A lot of times why the principle of sowing and reaping don't work for us because we try to use God like a slot machine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bless this person and then God going to give me a hundred or four. You heard that, then. Eh? I'm going I'm to I'm go down here and I'm going to put something in here in your hand and then God going to give me back a hundred four. And yeah, we treat him like a slot machine. You ever played the slot machine? Y'all looking crazy, man. I know some of y'all <laughs> Y'all have been to Vegas. Pastor went to Vegas one time. My grandma took me to Vegas. Parents took me to Vegas. I was just a teenager. They snuck me in because I looked like a grown adult and gave me a few dollars, y'all, to play the slot machine. I went in, put my little money in there, hit the thing, and money just started going everywhere. They were so scared, terrified. Uh, they said, put it in the bucket, let's go. <laughs> But we cannot treat God like a slot machine. That's sowing from our what? Our flesh. I'm going to bless somebody so God can do what? Bless me. He's warning us about sowing against the flesh. He's referring to our sin nature, y'all. We cannot satisfy our flesh. In chapter 5 of Galatians, y'all, when we get there in Bible study, it's going to be powerful. He talks about the sins of the flesh. And, and, and Paul says that if, if you sow hatred and discord and jealousy and division and witchcraft, yes, I said witchcraft because that's what he says in the word witchcraft and idolatry, sexual immorality and anger and selfishness, you are sowing to destroy yourself. That means when we talk about sowing from the flesh, when Paul talks about that, he's talking about things that the flesh loves. If you sow hatred, guess what you're going to get? Hatred. 
If you sow division, if you try to keep a house divided, if you try to keep a family divided, what you going to get? Division. So Paul says that, that, that he wants us to understand that whatever we sow is going to destroy us. That's going to so hard and destroy us. Because sin is still sin, y'all. And sin separates us from God. And it isolates us from the blessing of God. Therefore, it separates us from the goodness of God. Yes, thank you. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Amen. Whatever you sow. So what you, 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 you need to do an assessment of yourself and see what you're reaping. Because maybe you need to check and see what you actually what? Sow. Sow it. What actually sow it. But then Paul says to do make sure that we sow from our what? Our spirit. From our spirit. Don't sow from your flesh. He says sow from your what? Spirit. Sow from your spirit. Fall from your spirit, man. Don't sow to please your flesh. Sow from your spirit, man, because your spirit will not, what? Fail. If the Holy Spirit leads you in sowing, it will not fail you. Amen. And how do you know? How do you know if your spirit is leading you? The spirit only produces certain things, y'all. It only produces certain fruits. If you want to know if your sowing is led by the Spirit, it'll only produce the fruits of the Spirit. It'll only produce love. It'll only produce peace. It'll only produce joy. It'll only produce kindness. It'll only produce goodness. It'll only produce faithfulness. It'll only produce patience. It'll yes. only produce self-control. Yes. And if you don't have those things in your life, maybe you've been sowing the wrong thing. Because if you've been sowing from the Spirit, then you ought to have been sowing some joy. Amen. And when you show up in a room, folk ought to know that you come to bring joy. If, you, if, you, if you're not getting in love, what have you been sowing of? If you're not getting into peace in your life, have you been sowing peace? If nobody's kind to you, have you been sowing kindness? If nobody's good to you, have you been sowing good? If nobody's patient with you, have you been sowing patience? What you sow, that's what you what? Read. And this is what we need to spread throughout the world, y'all. If we let the spirit lead us, the spirit will fail us. If we let our flesh lead us, our flesh is going to always fail us. Amen. Amen. It's going to always fail us. Yeah. Everything you sow will come back to you. Folks say, well, Pastor, I, I, I disagree with that because I've been sowing for a while right now and I'm still in the need. It's going to come back to you. It may not come back exactly to you, but guess what? It'll come back to generations. Amen. Some of us are living right now off of seeds that our great great grandparents sowed. We're living off of seeds that our grandparents sowed. We're living off of seeds that our mother and our father sowed. The reasons our freezer are full and some of the stuff about the freezer is because mom. Be blessed Thank and hide the favor of God. 
And one day they were little lies and say, I had a grim grandma. I had a grim grandma. Don't be mad because I got favor on my life. My grandma paid for this favor when she was living. My grandmama took care of folks. My grandmama fed folks. My grandmama clothed folks. My grandmama preached folks. She sacrificed for folks. She went and asked for folks. My grandmama made a way. Well, man. Because she loved God and she served God. My family members, they sold some good crops. And now we're leaving out the blessings of their crops. I thank God for Emil and Catherine alone. I thank God for them. Because I'm living off the blessing of them. I thank God for Tillman and Agnes McDonald. Because I'm living off the blessing of them. I thank God for those folk that made a way and loved the Lord and did what's right so that I can do that in my life. And then Paul says, don't grow weary in doing good. Paul encourages this new term of thanks living. He encourages us to continue to do the right things and develop the characteristics of Jesus. I want you to listen to this Chinese proverb I read. Say, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. But if you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Paul says, don't get weary in well-doing. Because he understands that sometimes, y'all, we get tired sometimes. Amen. We get tired of blessing folks. Amen. We get tired on this journey. But Paul encouraged us to don't give up. He said, don't give up. You won't reap the harvest. Eventually the harvest is gone. But they get frustrated sometimes. Because some folks walk around here with an entitlement spirit, don't they? They feel like you're entitled to bless them. Some folks know your check, paycheck. They know you know it. And they got their hands out expecting that you're going to bless them every time. Instead of God to be a blessing to you. They look at that church. They got an entitlement spirit. We got to be careful about the children that we raise in our house. That we teach them. That we teach them good financial skills and that we teach them how to do things independently because if you don't know it, every time they get in a hard place, guess what they do? Pick up the phone. Because they feel like they're entitled to everything that's young. Every now and again, when I was raising children, I had to tell them, hey, wait a minute. You don't have no money. Me and your daddy got money. You don't. And we only have to do what the law says we got to do for you. Now, we're going to do what we want to do. We're going to be a blessing to you. But don't expect or determine that we're going to do it. Amen. And I thank God that we have raised kids that are considerate of that. Because people now, too many folk now in the world got an entitlement spirit on me. <laughs> they, it, 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 it's, a, it's a large part, too, of a lot of people who are struggling from symptoms of poverty and homelessness. Because now they figure that everybody is entitled to take care of them. Amen. They don't have to make a way. They don't have to be independent. They don't have to seek God. They don't have to pray and trust God. That everybody's going to make a way and take care of them. Another thing why sometimes we get weary and well doing, because folk don't have good manners. Amen. They don't say thank you. They don't say thank you. Me and Brother Fickin bless a lot of people. A lot, a lot of people. And I am always, my heart just overflow when people pick up the phone and say thank you. Thank you. That, thank you. I really appreciate that. You don't know how, really, how much that was a blessing to me. Because most of the time, what people do? They don't say thank you. Amen. They don't say thank you. And I don't care what you write. It's hard to bless folk who don't do what? Say thank you. Say thank you. Say thank you. That's true. Say thank you. After pastor's appreciation, after uh, Christmas, any time when you all do something to me, for me, I always struggle with the thank you. 
I want to write handwritten cards and press them out and put them in everybody's hand. But I don't want to miss anybody. And I don't want anybody who wasn't able to bless me. Because you bless me even if you just pray for me. I don't want anybody who wasn't able to bless me to think that. So what I usually do is I communicate with Megan and make sure that we just do a heartfelt, open welcome. But that's not always what I want to do. Because I know how important thank you is. When I say, when somebody say thank you to me, guess what? I need to keep on to do it. The kids came for trick or treat, and I was putting that little candy in their little basket. And, and, and some of the children walk over and they say, trick or treat. And then the little kids would say, thank you. I said, oh, Lord, if this thing get contagious, I can't wait till the next kids knock on the door because it was good to hear little bitty children, parents say, and the lady said, with some of her children back, she said, hey, what you supposed to say? You know how, you know how mama's used to do that. She said, what you supposed to say? They said, thank you, thank you, little babies coming up. Say, thank you, it, is, it, it does something to you. It empowers you Amen. when somebody says that. And they just walk off like they entitled to it. If you don't teach your children nothing, teach them at least to say thank you. Thank you. Because when I came up, you might have got your head knocked off. If, if you took something from somebody and cracked the head, it might have looked crazy, been crazy, been some beans or something. You know you didn't want to give you all kind of crazy. But you better go and say, Miss So-and-so, I just want to say thank you. I uh, thank you. You better act like you, you, you better act like you appreciate it. But we usually we get tired sometimes of doing good for others. Our folk don't even know how to say thank you. Amen. And then the last thing that people struggle with. Why they don't like to bless people? Because when other folk get blessed, the people that you bless, when they get blessed, they forget about you, don't they? <laughs> you keep blessing folks and blessing folk, and then when they when they want to come in, what they do? They dodge you. <laughs> they run away from you. They act like you got the plague. You don't see them till they broke, busted, and disgusted again. But when they get some, they are having, they are having, they get some have a big old cookout and they don't even call you. Amen. They don't even call you and tell you that they had it. You, you got to hear through the great thing. Amen. And you know, you know how we are, especially black folk. We got we 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 we, we feeling some kind of way then, ain't we? We're gonna drag you through the mud. <laughs> that joker when he didn't have nothing that every time he's turned around, he over here. Ask me again. Let that go ask me again. Let that girl ask me again. He gonna get the worst for I'm gonna straighten that joke. I'm gonna remind him about this. And they don't come back until all the money gone. That's what makes it hard for us sometimes to do. But what Paul says, keep on doing good. Don't let those things stop you. Keep on thanks with it. Keep on blessing people. No matter how they treat you, keep on feeding them at your table. Keep on sending them letters to eat potato pie. Keep on going by to see them. If you got a little something, bless them with it. Keep on doing on them. Keep on checking on them. Keep on sending them, checking on them, sitting with them, calling them. Keep on being a blessing to them. Because guess what? Man, it can't bless you. But God sees you. God sees you. And maybe the reason you ain't been to the hospital all year is because God saw you, right? Maybe the reason you ain't been to the cemetery all year is because what? God saw you. Thank you. Maybe the reason that you ain't been home all year, you had a roof over your head, they ain't come and get your car, they ain't come and get your house, is because what? God saw you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't get weary. Don't get weary in doing good for us. No matter how people treat you, you still be good to them. Because it's coming from your heart. Let's give God some praise in this heart. Thanks for living. Thanks for living. Y'all pray for me at Thanksgiving this year. Pray for me. Because I'm going to try to eat myself to death, I tell you. 
I am, I enjoy that holiday. I probably, I'm gonna probably try to fast for about three days <laughs> in order that I can enjoy Thanksgiving. Let us stand. We didn't have praise and worship, but we did today. God's a good God, ain't he? God's a good God. God's a good God. I love praise reports. Sister Maggie taught a wonderful Bible study this morning. She taught a wonderful Bible study this morning. I mean, Sunday school this morning. And uh, she talked about our testimony in that. Jordan calling this mid morning and sharing that testimony. She apologized for interrupting Sunday school. But she just couldn't hold it to herself. It, 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 it just blessed me, y'all. It blessed me to know that God is real and God is taking care of us. He has no respect of person. He has no respect of person. The doors that Paul never closed, they're always open. One of the things I love about Paul is that the invitation is always for you to come. This is a family. And we mean that we're a family. We, we, we demonstrate that in, in, in the way that we do the things that carry out the will of God. We invite you to come. Whosoever will, we invite you to come today. Is there anyone here today? Keep it. 
following the commandments of God and walking from his forfeit and his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Let's say the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all men, we have not been well of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by hard word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and our heart is sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy on the Lord. Have mercy on us. And our Lord Jesus Christ say, forgive us all this past and grant that we may hear and to serve thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's say, uh, oh, oh, Almighty God, I am the Father, who is our great mercy, has promised forgiveness of sin to all them that heart of repentance and true faith. Turn to thee, have mercy upon us, produce, pardon, and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us say, collect together, Almighty God, unto whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love thee, worthy be magnified by thy holy name. In Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very deep, right, and I vow to do that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therewith, angels and archangels, let's say this together, and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify thy glorious name. Have a more place to thee in saying, Holy, holy, Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in our manifold of great mercies. We do not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under this table, but thou art the same Lord, whose prophet is always to have mercy. Grant us through a full gracious Lord to eat the flesh of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and by, by made clean by his death, and washed through his most precious blood, and that we may ever dwell in him and he in us. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who have thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for thy redemption, who made there, by his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, commanding us to continue this perpetual memory of his most precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee. And grant that we receive these creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and precious and passion, that may be partakers of his most blessed blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for thee. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he had given thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remissions of sin. Do this in all for me, ye shall drink it, and remember some me. Amen. Amen. The reason I got emotional about this communion ritual is that for class, I had to learn it verbatim. Reverend Green was my proctor. The first time I failed. The second time I was able to go in and recite this communion ritual without any paper. And to really even be able to recite all these words without having this hymnal was to see how powerful these words are. They're so powerful. And what we're getting ready to do here is so sacred. So sacred. It's a powerful thing. And that God.
God communes with us, y'all, at this table today. He's here. He's present. And we're doing this in remembrance that one day we won't have to do this with him here anymore. Because we'll be with what? With him. Amen. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I eat it and I'm grateful. This is the blood that was shed for me and you will have with him. I drink it and I'm thankful. Let us say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, come to me.